I'm assuming you've tried it. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is what all the hoopla is about. People who realize they're developing an addiction to an opioid or may have already fallen into an addiction uh, have begun turning to Kratom as a solution. It relaxes your whole body if you take like two, one pill or two pills. People are using Kratom and its derivatives, teas, oils, powders, to wean themselves off of opioids while still managing any pain they may be experiencing. This right here is already pre-made and this is the pure leaf. So the same way uh, you'll take a shot of tequila that tastes terrible but it'll make you feel good, same thing with Kratom. It doesn't taste very nice, it tastes like a very strong bitter tea, but it gets the job done. I'm a big heavy advocate for Kratom. It helps with depression anti-anxiety, it helps with sleep deprivation, and it also helps with muscle pain. And in small amounts, it'll essentially give you energy and wake you up like coffee. In large amounts, that's where it's much more euphoric, sedating, and mimics more effects such as like morphine. When it comes to the crowds at this place in general, we have a bit of everything. Uh, we do get a very large handful of addicts, actually. The DEA announced that it was going to put Kratom on Schedule 1, which is the designation used for drugs that have an effect on the brain but don't have any proven medical use. Because of the lack of research on Kratom, we don't have any proof that it may or may not have medical use. So these are leaves of Mitrogenus speciosa, Kratom. These are actually two different strains that were grown here in the U.S. This is a red-veined variety and this is a green-veined variety. I spend most of my time doing medicinal chemistry research specifically focused on opioid receptor modulators and Kratom is one aspect of that research. As you see it's a rather nondescript yellow powder so this is what all the hoopla is about. <laughs> it does seem to be very helpful for some people in relieving chronic pain. I see the compounds in Kratom, mainly mitragynine, being a great starting point to develop new pharmaceuticals, which will be potent pain relievers without some of the severe side effects like addiction potential and um, respiratory depression. The overall, I think it has the opportunity to provide a new generation of opioid pain relievers that are much safer than what we have now, which is of course a huge deal because you have 18,000 people dying a year from prescription opioid overdoses and another 10,000 from heroin. People should definitely be concerned that Kratom might be pulled from the market, and furthermore, that research into Kratom's potential uses could be, uh, if not, you know, it wouldn't be banned, it could be curbed in the same way that marijuana research has been curbed. I mean, it could either drive them back to prescription opioids, which a lot of people have intolerable side effects from, like sedation and inability to function in their daily life, or it could drive them to illicit drugs like heroin, which they've actually been using Kratom to get off of. You know, when it comes to substitutes that I would used to get when I was coming off of other substances, you know, they prescribe you pills to get off your pills. They prescribe you medicines to get off your other illegal medicines. My fear personally is just any of the customers having a relapse of any kind. And being a first class A substance, being along the lines of heroin, it's like, wow, they could get into a lot of trouble for this. Really, I think to solve the problem, you need new legislation to cover Kratom specifically or to revamp the whole system. The fact remains, in the case of marijuana anyway, that even as more states are legalizing it, it's still illegal at the federal level. Uh, the same could very well happen to Kratom, we just don't know yet. <laughs>